Well, I certainly do, yes, as a European, also as a Portuguese, and uh, basically I, I would say as a Westerner, that is a member of the Western civilization and alliance. I see Europe as the birthplace of a Western civilization of liberty and personal responsibility, and, uh, and I see that Western um, tradition mainly based uh, in uh, the Atlantic Alliance, on the Atlantic Alliance between Europe and the United States, Canada, and part of the broader Western liberal democratic tradition. I think the, the most uh, crucial reference, not, not in my living memory, but that was very present in my parents' home and grandparents' home, homes, was D-Day, uh, June 1944. Of course, I was not born at that time, <laughs> but uh, that uh, the, even the images, uh, newspapers that was kept in my parents' house at that moment um, were uh, very present in daily conversations at the dinner table, and and so the idea of the D-Day, the liberation, or the beginning of the liberation of Europe from. Uh, Nazi tyranny and occupation was a sort of crucial reference in my house, my my parents and grandparents' house. So that, I mean, and that was, I mean, certainly associated with, crucially, with liberation of Europe, but it's also interesting, I think, and it's probably related to my first answer, that the day you had, uh, well, you had some Polish troops, you had some French troops, but it was mainly an operation based on British, American, Canadian too, I think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from the, uh, since the very beginning at my sort of family education, Europe was always associated with the Atlantic and the support that we received from the Americans and uh, resistance of Britain. worst moment in recent European history, I don't really see a particularly uh, bad moment. I mean, there have been, of course, periods of difficulties, crises, tensions, but compared to what we have had before, mm -hmm. um, I don't see really any tremendously bad moment in recent European year. And by recent, I mean uh, after the Second World War, after the end of the Second World so com War. Compared, compared to, to that, compared to the Second World War, or compared to the First World War, I mean, I think, fortunately, we have been quite fortunate uh, to have lived through free, free, free times and uh, times of freedom and democracy, especially, of course, after the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, which I think that after the end, it was in fact the sort of uh, complete conclusion, complete completion of the victory, of the Allied victory in the Second World War, 45, 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall sort of marks the completion of that victory, because as we know, 45 was the victory uh, against Nazism, but in fact, 89 was the victory against communism. So since then, since 45 in the West, in the Western Europe, since 89 in Central and Eastern Europe and in Europe as a whole, I don't think we have had, I mean, we have problems, tensions with Russia, that is worrying, but still uh, compared to what we have had before, mm -hmm. I think these have been 
happy times, as Darendorf used to say, happy times to be alive. Well, certainly the fall of the Berlin Wall, 1989, yeah. As I said, yes. So that was the, uh, as I said before, so in fact the victory, the, the, the victory in of the, of liberal democracy in 1945 was a partial victory. It was only a victory over one of the enemies. Then as we know, we had Central and Eastern Europe have remained occupied by the Soviet Union. And for that reason, I would certainly say that the most, uh, the best or the most uh, happy moment in recent European uh, history was the fall of the Berlin Wall, yeah, without any doubt. I have no idea. I mean, I've been a supporter of the European Union since a uh, long time, and uh, I was very happy when Portugal entered the European community at the time. Because, by the way, the fact that Portugal was not a member of the European uh, community was associated to the fact, was I think the, m the most important reason was that Portugal was not a democracy until 1974. So, we were allowed to join only after that, and the process took quite a while. It was 1985-86 that we joined. We were, we, yeah, we were accepted. So that was, uh, I mean, as a Portuguese, maybe I would say that was the most important moment. Uh, for me personally, well, if you want to take that personally in a broad sense, I would then say the most important moment was the fact that Portugal was allowed to join. First of all, that continues to uh, exist uh, peacefully and uh, within, within a general uh, atmosphere of prosperity. And, but perhaps associated with that, I would say, I would, uh, I would what? I would recommend. Well, not recommend, but I mean, I would like uh, that the European project could become more flexible, broad-minded, let's say liberal-minded, and namely this idea, and perhaps put aside the idea of an ever closer union as the only. I'm not saying people. I mean, there are people who think that the European Union should always be more integrated. Then. That's okay. Uh, that some people, I don't uh, subscribe to that view, but I, well, but they have, the, they're entitled to have that view. What I'm saying, so I'm not saying uh, uh, abolishing that view. What I'm saying is, um, I think we should not take that view, that ever closer union, always more integrated, as the, uh, how can I say, the only possible way ahead. And especially, certainly not the meaning of being in Europeanist having to be in favor of that. I, I don't agree with that. I, I think people are entitled, entitled to have that view. I mean, to, to be in favor of a more integrated Europe, certainly. Uh, we are a liberal democracy, so people are entitled to have different views. But precisely because of that, people are also entitled to disagree with that view. And this idea of creating a sort of constitutional dogma that if you are in favor of the European Union, you have to be in favor of an ever closer union, what they usually say, more Europe, always more Europe. Um, that's the expression. I don't agree with that. And uh, But it's, it's not only a question of disagreeing. I think that is not, uh, let's say, uh, good it's for the European project. Why? Because it narrows the European project, narrows the European project and makes it a sort of a sectarian. Instead of being a broad pluralist project 
flexible and, and within which you can have different views, rival views competing with uh, one another. The idea of uh, Europe being necessarily ever closer, um, in fact, narrows the range of European views that are possible. And in that sense, I don't think that's good for European project. So if you ask me what, I mean, that could be a, certainly would be a long conversation, but I mean, if there, uh, I have a main concern about this uh, uh, identification, tendency to identify the European project with a particular view. And by the way, if we compare that with uh, what we have in our liberal democracies, that's not what we have in, I mean, in, in our liberal democracies, we usually have at least, you, we need two parties at least, and we have more, and um, usually we have more. Uh, and, and so th the idea that you need a sort of uh, uniformity of views about the sort of end state to be achieved, I don't think that's good. If I may elaborate on this final yeah. question, um, do you think that there are particular policies or policy topics um, that the European Union is particularly well suited um, as a supranational organization to lead on and to set as an example for the rest of the world? For instance, climate or security? Um, or do you think that? those matters uh, could be... I think the main point of the European Union, and you said supranational uh, institution? Supranational. Uh, supranational, yeah. Well, I wouldn't... Super... I, I, I wouldn't uh, be a great enthusiast of the idea of a supra European Union as a supranational institution. I think European Union is basically based on nation states, coalition of nation states, which are liberal democracies, and that is the main foundation. But of, even as it is, sorry to yeah, interrupt you, so, even as it is. So I wouldn't call it supranational, that's my only point. Um, but, and I don't think, I'm not particularly fond of the idea that European Union as such should lead this or should lead that. I think the main point of the European Union is to promote uh, cooperation, uh, competition, healthy market competition within um, the nations of Europe. So I'm not particularly enthusiastic about specific policy. I mean, I, I'm a great supporter of policies that promote interaction, free interaction between the nations and the peoples of Europe. But the idea of having much more than that, I think that policies should be mainly the um, responsibility of the national parliaments and not the supranational. So I, I mean, I like uh, uh, Ralph Darendorf used to say that he was not a neuroskeptic, which I'm not either, but he was not a neuro enthusiast either. I think that. So he was not a neuroskeptic, and he was not a neuroenthusiast. So what was he? And that was his own description. He was a skeptical Europeanist, and I entirely subscribe to that view. And I think I learned a lot from Darendorf, of course. And I subscribe to that view. I'm also not a neuroskeptic. I'm not a neuroenthusiast either, and I would be happy to be defined as a skeptical Europeanist. And by the way, another point that Darendorf emphasized was that if, if, if we, um, let's say, narrow too much the, 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 the understanding of the European project in terms of the, this Euro-enthusiasm and Euro-federalism or supranational institution, what you may get um, as an unintended consequence of that, what one can get is a strong reaction, national reaction, nationalistic reaction, and perhaps we are witnessing elements of that. But 
but I mean, I wouldn't subscribe to the view that the, the only uh, culprit of this is nationalism. I think there is another uh, culprit, uh, which is uh, what I would call vanguardism, the idea that the nation state is something that must be superseded, that's only for uh, un unenlightened people or uneducated people. I don't subscribe to that. And I think we are um, creating or uh, fostering or allowing to be created what also Darendorf called unfortunate dichotomies between nationalism and supranationalism. If you ask me which side I take, no. I don't, I'm not a nationalist, but I'm not a supranationalist either. And I think we should uh, avoid that unfortunate dichotomy. And would you avoid labeling your view altogether or? I would label my view a skeptical Europeanist. Very good. Which means I fully recognize and respect and defend the nation state as a national parliament, as the basis of democracy. That's the only basis we, we have tested. I'm not saying it's the only basis that can be. I don't know about the future. And I, I think the future is open. Nobody knows what the future will be. And, um, but something is for sure. Liberal democracy, as we have experienced it, has always been based on nation states and national parliaments. We shouldn't play games with that. But that does not mean we cannot and should not cooperate. And actually, the history of liberal democracies has also been the history of cooperation. And we should be in favor of that. So that's my, and free trade and, yeah.